Welcome back guys, welcome back to Classic Replay. I had so much fun doing the Amstrad Top 40 homebrew games uh, a few weeks back and got lots of positive feedback that I thought I'll do another and maybe continue it each week, month. And I definitely want to do this for the Specky and 64 as well. So the first bit of news is more of an update. Hopefully you've heard of Firetire. Well this is its fourth update. Now that's awesome. Now this is a massive game changer of an update. Watching the video how the car slides across the road, not anymore. It now comes and features the option to have a mobile camera uh, instead of a static cam. Out goes the 180 mile per hour limit. You can now travel like a bat out of hell at 250 miles per hour. You can now practice each track to your heart's content. There was no other option before, you had to race the entire Grand Prix. I'm still completely rubbish at it, but with these new updates, I'm not going to lie to you. This for me is now a 10 out of 10 game. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines and bring on version 5. Did anybody play Tetris back in the 80s on the Amstrad CPC? It was absolutely useless. It was a massive game and they completely botched it. Many Tetris games have come in its name, but nothing filled the gap. Until now, that is. Oh my god, look at this. It's the Game Boy! And it'll run on a 128K CPC 464 and 6128, and the Amstrad Plus model as well. And it's got the theme tune as well. Brilliant! The colour palettes can be changed, and the Amstrad Plus model allows you to play it in the original green screen. Now if only we could get Super Mario, Metroid and Kirby running on the Amstrad. What an absolute thing of beauty on the Amstrad CPC. Now for another bombshell. Come on, who doesn't love a great tower defence game? This is personally, in my humble opinion, the best of its type on the Amstrad CPC. It's a new game, only recently released, and it runs on every single model of Amstrad CPC, including the Plus. The music, as you can hear, is a thing of beauty. The graphics are clear, precise, and do their job. And if you play this on original hardware, there's a hidden message. I've had this for about a week now, and of that week, I've put about 10 or 20 hours into this, which basically translates to I've had lots of late nights staying up playing this. It's a wonderful game, it's one of the best on the Amstrad CPC and the music has to be listened to to really appreciate uh, the hard work that's gone into this. This is another excellent game from Ego Tripped, but sadly what we have here is Ego Tripped's last game on the Amstrad CPC. So sad in one sense, but happy in another as the game is absolutely fantastic. As you can hear in the background there, the soundtrack is fabulous. Naturally, you could draw comparisons to the original Game Boy version of Zelda. And like the original Prelude to Chaos, you'll have to avoid enemies, talk with folk, find jewels, move crates, and solve ever-increasing, more difficult puzzles. The game sadly doesn't feature the Amstrad 16 color mode zero, but what we do get is lots of detail and fantastic gameplay. This is a 2021 release, so be sure to pick it up. Hi Karumba! What a nice little surprise! Quite impressed with the graphics, Mode Zero and the colour choice. Lovely smooth animation. It's not going to win any awards for pushing the Amstrad near its limits. And each new screen presents its own challenge. There's a good variety of enemy as you push further to the right of the screen. And although there's not much in the way of spot effects, the music is bloody brilliant. The game first saw release on the ZX Spectrum, I think in 2018 or 19. So basically what we have here is a specky port with a splash of colour and minus the attribute clash. I like it so far, so definitely pick this one up. I was able to download this one from CPC Power, so head there now. Another new game on the Amstrad, this one took me by surprise. I love shoot 'em ups especially in the style of Thrust. This looks kind of basic, but trust me, it's anything but. You can actually buy this one on cassette for around $4.99. Your mission is to rescue the universe and be home back in time for tea. You do this by visiting lots of different planets and rescuing the cosmonauts that strangely, they're all dotted around in the weirdest of places. You'll need to pick up items as well and take out the enemy. 
It's available on the Commodore 64 as well. And I have to say, it's really difficult to put down. So with all that in mind, it basically adds up to a really interesting puzzle like shooter. Wow is all I can say. I had this as a kid. I mean, the game mechanics are basic by 2021 standards. But it's really interesting to see this on the Amstrad CPC. I've seen better choices in the color palette department. But even today, it's still a good little challenge. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing like experience in this uh, on the original handheld. And I'll be surprised if anybody remembers this game, but for me, it does bring back lots of memories. What's good as well is the sound is quite uh, authentic. Boop, 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 beep, beep, beep. And trust me, although this looks easy, it's one of the hardest Game & Watch games ever. I guess this is not everyone's cup of tea. I'm kind of hoping you might enjoy it. In fact, let me know your favorite Game & Watch game. But this is a lovely piece of history played out on the Amstrad CPC. I feel like nobody covers the old traditional uh, adventure games anymore. But this one is a cross-platform effort. Uh, and it came out for the Amstrad CPC as well. Ovs. It features all the standard uh, abbreviations as you'd, as you'd expect. So L for look, X or EX for examine, I for inventory. It's proper old school, it takes me right back. I liked uh, a game, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And this has a similar sense of humour. So if you like adventure games in this early style, give this one a go because it's really funny. Oh, and I nearly forgot there's four parts. And this game almost never saw the light of day. So think about that and give it a good download and a good play. Next up is Dr. Roland. I've never heard of this one. It's got a bit of a Tetris feel about it. I'm loving the Nintendo uh, sprites and Mode Zero Amstrad graphics. Apparently this was originally created for the CPC Retro Dev in 2020, but was banned. So there's lots of viruses about. You've got to match uh, four colors. But that's easier said than done. As you can see, I'm bloody struggling. And this is only the first level. What's bloody good about this as well is it's a two-player game. Naturally, a sign of the times. There's a lot of games that are coming out that are inspired heavily by the coronavirus, COVID-19. So expect a sequel. Dr. Roland gets a booster jab. Great news as well. This one runs on the C4 CPC and the M4. And all that remains to say is thank you, John Lobo. Moritz, the striker. Moritz, the striker. Nice little addition there. Look how beautiful that loading screen is. That is Mode Zero 16 colour at its best. It's not often a game comes along and impresses the socks off me, but listen to this. And if that's not good enough, have a load of this. And get this, it's another Lobo game. I can't spend too much time playing this, but it's absolutely brilliant. The controls and the animation on speed of the dog are so precise. I haven't experienced anything like this control wise since Manic Miner. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I'm definitely massively pleasantly surprised. So that's my 10 new games for the Amstrad CPC. I just have a few more updates before I head off. I'm hoping for my next video that Toki will have finally been released. Zypho, son of Amstrad, recently covered a new 25Hz version of Elcon, and apparently it's a game changer. And thanks to Chris Wilkins, Amstrad fans now have a brilliant new magazine, and it's called Amtix. On that bombshell, we end the show, and I'll leave you with this. Bye!